it is time for our sicko segment. <laughs> so this girl here works for Bodyslam.net. Now I'm not trying to shame nobody. I'm sorry. But like she works for Bodyslam.net, bro. This is what I mean. I tell you guys this. Like, there's like people, like these activists get these writer jobs at all these no DQ and all these places these days, dude. Um, but she goes, ignore the ink on my hands. But this was me the entire day. A picture of her crying. I think I cried maybe 20 times this pay-per-view. I lost count. She's talking about all in, guys. She goes, this was the most amazing pay-per-view AEW has put out this year. And the most emotional one yet in, in its five-year history. I don't know about that, man. Uh, with all the names injured or unable to attend, mind you, they're all a part of this magic, this environment, this energy, this ethereal realm that is professional wrestling. Oh, my God. It all came as one today. Debuts and returns, title changes galore. We now enter a new era as we approach year six of elite excellence. To Tony Khan, blah, 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 who helped start it all from 2018 to today. AEW makes me realize that once again, I want to say this. I love all elite wrestling, and this will be my future job. And this will be my future job. You what? May my tears not be in vain. Holy f holy may my tears not be in vain as i woke up this morning to breathe once again to witness something beautiful as this we are all all in on aew i know i am magic thy name is all elite wrestling <laughs> you guys i don't i'm not trying to be a dick what the f is wrong with these people Bro, literally, this will be my job one day. And you write for Bodyslam.net. So you can't go to their website and learn anything accurate about WWE or AEW ever again. Because this lady here writes for them and literally is begging Tony Khan for a job saying she cried. I don't know if this is what they're looking for in a, an employee. It seems like you're emo you don't keep your emotions in check, but maybe Tony likes that. I'm just teasing, by the way. I'm trying to make light of this. But listen, Christ, this is some wacky guys. And Bodyslam.net, like this is, if no DQ as well, Fightful. Like you just call it like it is, man. All these places, like, I don't know what she does, but Melody or whatever, the lady, Leighton, whatever your name is, shout you out. But are you, do you write story? Like, I don't know. If she's writing about AEW, how do you think she's writing about it? You know what I mean? Like, it's not from an objective eye. It's from someone who's trying to will Washington themselves into a job. Just being honest. So, I don't know, man. That's pretty intense. And, yeah, part of the sicko moment of the week. I got another one. Well, Chris Connor, what do you make of this, first off? This is, it, it's become a cult. I mean, this is the AEW <laughs> fans who think... I mean, look, was it a good card? Yeah, it was a nice little card. It was full of some awesome crappy matches. The FTR versus the Young Bucks versus the Acclaimed was sort of awful. Mercedes versus MJF was a train wreck. You had the whole garbage that was Jericho versus Hook for the title, which we were literally crapping on. Uh, look, Mariah May was a Mariah May, Tony Storm was pretty good. The main event was pretty good. I mean, it was long. It was tiring, and after a while, I was I was ready to check out because I'm going, oh crap, this is just half these matches I don't care about. So, but that's yeah, sicko. I don't know, man. The AEW, not the AEW guys who everything is awesome. This is wonderful. This is the greatest thing ever, and and I'm happy she they... loves something this much. But I got a feeling it's not as much as she's playing it up to be. I doubt she cried twenty times. I doubt she honestly believes it was that magical of an event. Like, even diehard sickos aren't saying it was that great, saying last year's was better and stuff. Not to, I don't know. I just, <laughs> just, th this is the only reason I brought it here is because it's bodyslam.net. Or maybe if this was a sicko, I would have brought it to the segment. This is also a celebration segment, by the way, guys. The sicko segment isn't just to roast sickos. We're all IWC sickos. I apply it to the whole IWC. It's to celebrate people as well. But this one is like, okay, calm down. Um, Duke loves wrestling. We'll talk about this. He's coming on next week. We're going to debate this whole glass CM Punk. Um, so Drain Bamager had a full-on melty uh, today. He goes, 
WWE lowballing wrestlers getting outbid, seeing Swerve Strickland and Daniel Garcia get huge bags of money, and then throwing a tantrum pretending to care about the health of the wrestling industry. Incredible sour grapes. And like, what the f is he even talking about? WWE, he's going based off of Tony Khan claiming that they inflate the prices or whatever. Like, I'm assuming that's what he's talking about. What did WWE throw a tantrum about? They didn't throw a tantrum at all. They're just making up saying random that never happened. And they just invent it in their heads and their little circle jerk. It's crazy. But um, WWE never lowballed anyone. Okay. Just because Tony pays someone $2 million who doesn't draw doesn't mean that WWE should give them $2 million to not draw. And um, they never get outbid. Or they get, no, 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 it's not even outbid. They just tell you, here's what we're going to give you. And then. AEW matches it or wrestlers are working Tony and they're saying, yeah, WWE's given me this much. You know, that's what they're all doing. That's why Tony thinks, oh, their WWE's inflating. No, it's because everybody whose contracts coming up goes, even if they didn't talk to WWE says to them, oh, I talked to them and they, uh, yeah, they're going to give me this much. That's all it is, man. Tony's a geek. Um, anyways, and then so is this drain damager. And then he's literally crying about it. He's literally throwing a tantrum about it. Here's him later in the day. I wish these annoying Fed stands would shut the up about ratings and just stick to bootlicking the company they dick ride. Well, why is it okay to talk about money and lowballing, but it's not okay to talk about ratings? These people are sociopathic and they like to pick and choose. They project and they like to pick and choose what's okay what's valid in in the conversation or what isn't like i'm si meanwhile this guy's a dick rider account so in their mind this is why i pointed out they're sociopaths they're narcissist weirdos this is why i pointed out because in this person's mind it's okay to stand aew it's not okay to stand wwe that's what they think in their in this person's mind right here they expose it themselves it's projecting it's literal projection so we point this out all the time. We psychoanalyze this all the time. But he goes, like, I'm serious. I've had enough of it. Why do you continue to hate on professional wrestling? I don't fucking got ass. Because to some people, it's not pro wrestling, bro. And then Drain Bamager types this out. When everyone starts, like, describing, like, and not like if a tweet's like, I feel sick, puke emoji. Not like that. But when you start going, like, sigh, this, and there, you're on some weirdo time. And he goes, oh, MFG, I need to sit down. I feel sick. My appetite is gone and my day is ruined. Bro, the Fed ruined his day. But yet we're dick rider, asshole, crazy lunatic people. And yeah, I consider myself a sicko. I consider myself a fedophile, as they call it. Fedophile, everyone. Don't AI that. That's what the new, that's one of the terms that they call everyone, right? An e-drone. And uh, I'm all of it. I love wrestling. But yeah, they these people right here are nuts, bro. This turns people off of AEW so much. And um, yeah, the WWE people do this too. But they were poked, man. We got to be honest. Like They were bringing up WWE. We're going to do everything different, them. We're revolutionizing. We're going to beat Raw. Bald assholes. It's always, oh, they're inflating the prices. Are they, or did Buddy Matthews just pretend to talk to them and he's dating Rhea Ripley? So you all, and he just told you a number and you get worked, Tony, because you're a mark. Is that what it is? I think it's like, you know, I think, I don't know. <laughs> I think I'm more right than I'm wrong on that one. So, um, yeah, that was our sicko segment. Oh, wow.